welcome. This video is going to be what sold for me on the various platforms that I sell on for the first week of February. So my first week being a full-time reseller and uh, before eBay and Poshmark decided to ruin everything. <laughs> But I'm going to scoot over, and unfortunately, Moxie, you're gonna have to get off, thank you. And um, we're gonna go with Poshmark first. I made one sale over on Poshmark, and it is this vintage, like, MCM era, so probably like late 60s, Monkey Pod Lazy Susan. I picked this up for $6 at the DAV, and it sold on Poshmark for $20. I've had this for a while. I thought it would sell much faster than it did but I'm glad that it's off to a new home and I already got my five star rating. So I'm happy about that. And I'm happy that stuff is selling on Poshmark, at least until they made the changes. So maybe as I cross post more and Poshmark's <laughs> and Poshmark regresses or reverts back to what it was before, maybe we'll be okay. So then I'm going to just scoot over this way and then we're gonna switch over to eBay. Now there's a lot of sales on eBay, not a whole lot of high dollar sales, but a lot of sales. So if you wanna go grab a snack, now's a good time to do that. First sale is actually uh, two items that went to the same person. So Denise, thank you very much. She sent me a lovely message, which I think you can see on here. It's like, I saw your video that you're going full time. So I wanted to support you. So she was trying to start off my full-time reselling with a good sale. So thank you for doing that. She bought this vintage glass bake, which was, had like a spice of life type of design on the front of it. These are perfect for brownies. These like eight by eight squares. They're like the perfect brownie dish. She paid $11.87. And then she also purchased the vintage mercury glass. So the larger ones, I had two just oddball ones I bought from that big lot at that estate sale. And as you can see here on this, I did refund her some shipping because she bought them both separately instead of doing the combined shipping. So I just refunded her the difference because, uh, while I appreciate those of you buying stuff from my store because I do make them public and I appreciate you guys wanting to support me that way, I do not want to make money off of you in that way. Like, if it costs significantly less to ship it, I'm going to give you the money back. And I would do that even if you weren't um, a viewer of the channel. I just, it feels icky to me. I don't like it. <laughs> this next item is a vintage, again, MCM, Danish stainless steel tea candled butter dish. I, I, whenever I find these in good shape for cheap, I pick them up. So it sold for $10.94 and the buyer paid for shipping. The next item is one of those items where I delisted it and relisted it, did sell similar, and it sold literally within a few hours of me relisting it again. This is something I picked up for free at the Hoarder House, so I have had this for a very long time. Uh, I probably should have done the sell similar a long time ago, but you know, it's part-timer. It was just trying to keep my head above water. <laughs> but it sold for my full asking price of $9.87 and the buyer paid $4 for media mail shipping. This next item is a Travis Matthew polo. So this is a 3XL. I paid $4 for this, $4.50 for this. And the buyer sent me an offer of $12 and I accepted and they paid $5 for shipping. So I'm more than happy to, uh, you know, double my money on something that's super quick. This sold within like less than a week of me listing it. This is another item that took an exceptionally long time to sell. And once I delisted it and relisted it, it sold. Finally, I paid $6 for these and it sold an offer of $20 and the buyer paid pad a flat rate for shipping. I'm just so glad they're gone because i've had them for like i think almost two years at this point and yeah i uh it has to be something spectacular for me to pick up a size six shoe anymore unfortunately that is uh not 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 a size that moves for me at all this next item i think i paid like a dollar or two dollars for it and you can see how old this listing is and uh, this is another item where i delisted it and relisted it Although I'm surprised that I didn't change the shipping on it. Normally I do that. But it sold for $10 with free shipping. 
and I'm just glad it is gone. It's another item that I've been sitting on for a while, so the D-list and relist uh, was amazing. I love selling vintage. I really enjoy selling vintage. It has a special place in my heart. So when I saw these for, I think, $4 at, I think, the CHKD, I just... <sighs> I had to have them uh, and they were in my size so I was very 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 tempted to keep them but I did decide to list them and they sold for my full asking price of $39.87. I did have these for two years. I was waiting for the right buyer. I figured whenever I went full time and had time to actually you know do outfit of the day shots I could wear these but they sold before that happened. And again, $39.87, so that was, to me, worth waiting on. To you, maybe not, but to me, it was worth waiting for the right buyer for. REI Co-op is a really good brand as far as I'm concerned. So not all, not all REI sells well, but anything with the REI Co-op tag, if you don't know what REI is, it's an outdoor store. And their Co-op, line of products to me seems to sell faster than any of their other products but it's still not going to sell for a whole lot of money it's not it's a good bread and butter butter brand as far as i'm concerned so i paid four dollars and fifty cents for this shirt it wasn't my size so i was hoping to wear it before it sold but it sold within less than a week of me listing it uh for sixteen dollars and the buyer paid four dollars for shipping Another item that was a super quick flip, this is a Foot Joy Men's 2XL Quarter Zip Golf Vest. It sold on offer for $24 and the buyer paid $5 for shipping. It sold within a week of me listing it. I paid $4.50 for that uh, quarter zip. Another item that sold within a week of me listing it, this Under Armour Heat Gear Polo. I paid $4.50, sold within a week for $12.50 and the buyer paid for shipping. So I'm uh, doubling my money plus some, if that makes sense. This next item I paid $2 for at an estate sale. Uh, it's a vintage super soaker, still in the original box. And I sold it for $15 and the buyer paid $10 for shipping. So pretty happy about that. I kind of figured when it got warm again, these would probably go. This next item I want to talk about, I, I know that not everybody likes selling mugs, but I do really enjoy selling mugs because I, I they're my favorite things to drink out of. And I have a soft spot in, in, in here for them. In my positive feedback for this item, I got a message saying that she had, this woman had purchased it for her husband. This was the same mug that her husband's mother would drink out of all the time and uh it had broken and you know his mother had passed away so this was very sentimental so um it, that's i really love those kind of things like i have there are certain mugs that my dad drinks coffee out of that i have a lot of sentimentality attached to it the you know old mcdonald's like glass mugs that you could buy for like a dollar uh, you know, back in the 80s, like the 70s and 80s, like those are the mugs that me and my brother used to drink out of. So I have a lot of some sentimentality with those Garfield mugs. I paid a dollar for this. <laughs> and it really meant a lot to somebody else. So I'm glad that I could save this from getting smashed and trashed. And that is in part why I, why I do pick up uh, vintage mugs is for that reason. It's because it's not the first time someone has said something similar to me where it's been a, a important sentimental reason for purchasing the mug. This is something I bought for $2 at an estate sale and it is a vintage corningware. Most corningware I only pick up if it, it is the vintage made in the USA corningware. Um, this took, you know, a year and a half to sell, but I paid $2 for it, sold it for 10 and the buyer paid $15 for shipping. I have the space to uh, hold on to it. So I'm more than happy to do that so it doesn't get smashed in trash. This is the second of the metal boomerang ashtrays that I found and it sold for $11.50 and the buyer paid $4 for shipping. So I now no longer have any more of those and I paid $2, so a dollar a piece and I sold them for like $21. So pretty happy about that. This next item is another Travis Matthew polo. This one sold for my full asking price of $14.87 and the buyer paid for shipping. This one did have a golf club on it. Not, yeah, so it had a golf country club on it. 
so it had a W. The other two, so the other Travis Matthew polo and the Footjoy zip, they all had the golden horseshoe um, embroidery on it as well for their golf country club. If you can put what country club it's from in your listing, sometimes that'll make it so it doesn't detract it. Like the Golden Horseshoe is kind of like a fancy schmancy place here in Williamsburg. So I think also it's like a sign of luck plus the 18 holes. So I think aesthetically it's a cute embroidery and this one's just a W. So maybe someone with a W name decided, you know what, I want that. So not every golf club embroidery for these golf brands is detract detracts from the value, but just take that into an account when you're sourcing this kind of golf stuff. This next item is a vintage Pendleton piece. Again, I love selling vintage and I love selling vintage wool skirts, especially wool skirts, wool pants, wool dresses. I, I like my natural fibers. So I sold this for $23 and the buyer paid $9.65 for shipping. I know that Tommy Bahama is oversaturated and like for the last three years, you know, all resellers have talked about Tommy Bahama to the point where it's gotten blown out. There's still, I still pick it up when I find it because I normally can get it between less than five, I can get it for less than $5 and it still flips pretty fast for me. I do stick to the silk blends and the Hawaiian prints, or these big embroidery pieces. So this was a 2XL, I paid $4.50. Um, this did have like some discoloration on one of the sleeves and it still sold for $29 and the buyer paid for padded flat rate shipping. And I already got my positive feedback from this. So even flawed, this still sold for almost $30. And here's a tie sale. So I've had a mug sale. I've had a tie sale. I feel like, you know, this was a complete bob week for me. Uh, it's a, it was a new Ben Sherman tie that I picked up. I paid, I think, $2 for this. And it sold for $13 and the buyer paid $4 for shipping. And I also got positive feedback for this. You also know that I love selling pearl smats. So again, <laughs> I pick this stuff up because it sells for me and it sells pretty quickly for me. I know not every reseller has the same luck with mugs and ties and pearl snaps that I do. I recommend as a reseller that you sell things that you enjoy so that your way you're more likely to list it and sell things that you can source pretty well in your area. So a lot of these things are things that I can source very easily in my area that aren't overpicked over. So that's another reason why I pick these things up and three, pick things that work for you. So not every reseller has the same clientele. Like, you know, Crazy Lamp Lady Jocelyn, she literally has thousands of people that have saved her store. So she can sell stuff that I can't sell because she's got a clientele list that like want the stuff, the kind of stuff that she sells. I have like, a certain clientele that shops my stuff. It's the same thing with like the curated like Poshmark closets where there's like an aesthetic that they go for. Like, you know, my friend Victoria over at Super Geek, she has a vibe, like her Poshmark closet is a vibe. It's a beautiful vibe because she just has the most amazing taste, but that's a curated closet. So she has a clientele that shops specifically with her because they know what kind of stuff they're going to get. So, this is just a long-winded way to say I sold a Pearl Snap shirt. <laughs> this is not a great brand, so again, I wouldn't pick it up necessarily. I wouldn't recommend picking up Drysdale Workwear, which is what this was. But because it was $2 at the DAV, that's why I purchased it. And I sold it for my full asking price of $12.87 and the buyer paid $5.50 for shipping. And I sold it within like a couple... <laughs> I sold it within like two weeks, which was a surprise to me. This is a vintage Eddie Bauer goose down puff of parka. So this wasn't like a puffer, like if it was the puffer, like with the bubbles, if it had the bubbles, not the boobs, I'm sorry what I'm trying to go for. If it had the bubbles, then this would have sold for more, but this was just a regular puffer parka, kind of similar to the jacket you guys see me wear all the time, except for men. 
and it sold for $35 and the buyer paid $15 to have it shipped. So it was a $50 jacket sale basically. So I'm really happy with that sale and I'm glad it's gone off to a new home because it took up a lot of space in my closet. <laughs> this next item is another thing that I sold from the horror house. So again, it's something I've had for a quite a while and this is something else that once I delisted it and sold similar, uh, it sold within 48 hours of me doing that and it sold on offer for $6.50 and it was pretty much free shipping. Pretty happy with that. Again, this was free. Yes, I only paid, I got, I made $2 off of this thing, but it would have gone in the trash because this was from a hoarded household and something like this. Uh, the individual that was, that had purchased the hoarded house would not have saved something like this. So I'm glad it's off to new home and hopefully we'll go onto a garment for somebody. But that's everything that I sold. Uh, this is a little bit of a thick video, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed my little diatribes as well. And I will see you guys uh, the next odd day for another video. Bye. Bye. Miss Maxie's here um, for once. She's not going to be here as soon as I scoot over, but she's here right now.